Hello and welcome to ukremedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today I'm going to show you 20 useful tricks in After Effects that you may not know about. Uh, and obviously, probably a lot of you know all of them and if that's you, I'm sorry. Be sure to come back next time. But as of right now, we'll dive right in into our number one uh, and it is keyframe velocity. And basically I have a two keyframe animation in this comp and as you can see, it's just very boring, linear kind of feel, stops kind of fast uh, there's no personality to it very 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 boring so how do we make it more exciting and one way to do it is making it uh, arrive uh, slower to this uh, keyframe instead of stopping fast so basically uh, have that bezier type animation so to do that let's let's um, try one and just selecting this keyframe and hitting shift f9 and it makes it uh, easy ease in and it kind of does it, but how do we take it even further? I want to over-exaggerate this. So what I want to do it is um, go into the graph here and selecting uh, Speed Graph. And Speed Graph shows us basically the speed of our animation. So this is where it stops, so it's zero, and that's where it's the highest. So how do we make it, see right now you can tell it stops kind of fast. So how do we make it more smooth? So one way is, is playing with the influence left and right. So it's dragging it out like that, and then dragging this up. The, the the first keyframe up in speed so this is up and down in speed so that's what I would do in the past and it will give me that kind of uh, feel that I'm going for but how do we do that um, without using the speed graph because speed graph or, can get very complicated at times especially if you have a bunch of them and it's just if, if you've used them you know what I'm talking about so but there's a quicker way to do it and it is just simply right clicking on this keyframe and going into a keyframe velocity and in here it's the same thing as we did left and right influence kind of thing. Uh, so let's take it to like 90 uh, for this keyframe. And let's make this keyframe uh, go up in speed. So the same thing and just bring it very high. Um, and if you hit preview, you see it's the same thing. In fact, if you go back to the uh, graph editor, you can see that it's the same type animation. So yeah, keyframe velocity. Number two, it is composition mini flowchart. This one is very useful, actually, if you if you don't know about it. So let's say if I go into this comp and that comp, and I basically get lost in comps or pre-comps, and especially if not if that's not your project, it can get very hectic, stressful, trying to find your way back, and you're like, man, this is you know not that uh, time effective. So how do I fix that? Uh, there's a button here. You click on that, and it'll highlight the path you took to get there. Uh, that's pretty useful, um, and also. By hitting tab on your keyboard, you'll get the same uh, window. So yeah, you just follow, you know, the path back, and boom, you're right at uh, where you started. Number three on the list is align tools, uh, and this one I find myself using a lot actually. Uh, if you're familiar with the one, with align tools in uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, you can definitely relate to this one. It's pretty much the same. So here it is on the right side of my screen. But if you don't see it, make sure to go to window, and and make sure the align checkbox is checked uh, and so here it is basically the way it works you select your objects and you can either align it according to your selection or to the composition so I'm gonna work with the selection so let's say I want it to be flat or centered on the x-axis all of them basically centered uh, and all I have to do is just click this button right here what if I want for them to be uh, for, to have the exact amount of space between all of them uh, it would be this button right here what if I want this one to be justified to the right side and that one to the left side? That's how you do it. And then let's say I want to have the equal amount of space. There, here you go. So you can you can see how helpful this can be. Uh, the same thing applies for the uh, Y axis as well. So let's say I want this one to be justified to the bottom and that one to the top. And let's say I want them to be centered and then have equal amount of space. So there you have it. Uh, number four. Uh, replacing content in the timeline so basically I have a little artwork here and, and it's just an image um, just a basic image and I have the same images with different backgrounds uh, over here and let's say I want to replace that image um, how do I do that you know I hope you're not doing this you know dragging into the composition and rescaling and doing all this jazz but anyway the best way to do is just select select or select a layer you want to replace and then hold alt uh, and control click 
and re and click and drag and it will replace the image. Another way to do it basically while this uh, the layer you want to replace is selected, you can select another one and just hold control alt and forward slash on your keyboard and it'll re replace it for you. So yeah, uh very quickly. So I love I love that feature actually. So number 5, uh, system color picker. Now, this one might be not that useful for some people, but if you have like a like a palette full of colors and you want to uh, use them in many different layers. It can get very hectic if you don't have them up all the time. So one way to do it, I mean, obviously, if you click on this, you know, there's no palette in here. So if you go to Edit and um, Preferences and General, and in, inside there you'll see a um, Use System Color Picker. Make sure you check this uh, check check box and hit OK. And now when you click on this, you'll see a whole different setup here. So now you can like go to the colors and pick any color you want really. Uh, you can type them in here and say add to uh, custom colors and basically you, you slowly generate a little palette here that you can pull out later and use. So yeah, I think this one's very useful, like I said, especially if you have a bunch of elements to change colors to. Like let's say this one and I can go into the color here and they're already all in here. So I just change to the color I want and in no time you don't have to, you know, trying to find colors and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah, system color picker, uh, pretty useful. Uh, I don't use it often, but sometimes I do find myself using it. All right, so number six, it's render presets. Now, this one is very, very useful, especially if you have to re render out different comps, so many of them, and with the same settings. So basically, let me show you. Here's a comp I have, and let's say I want to render it out. I either do control M on the keyboard to send it to the queue, or I go to composition, and uh, right here, add to the uh, render queue. And once I'm in here, let's say I want to do some settings. Let's say uh, QuickTime H.264. Let's like resize it to um, 960 by 540. Good. Let's say I like this setup. Awesome. But what if I have like, I don't know, five more comps to go? What I don't like doing is going to this one and doing the same thing what I just did in the past, you know, in the last one. Uh, I just would take, you know, the time I don't really have. So one way to do it is you just go to the um, this uh, render queue that you've made, uh, the se all the settings you've made, uh, you just go in into this button right here and just say make template and it'll make a template um, of your setup basically. So right here I'll just label H264 and say OK. And so now I can select all my other ones and find H264. I already had one but anyway boom and it changes all of them to the exact same setup I have on this one. So this one can be a, a time saver big time. Anyway, yeah, definitely, definitely useful. All right, number seven, cycle mask colors. Now, this one is very useful, actually. Let's say I have an image here and I want to, um, uh, you know, do some masking and stuff and who knows, whatever it is. But, you know, sometimes it gets complicated if you have the same masks with the same colors, you know, yellow, yellow, yellow. And obviously you can change them in here and it can be great. But what if there's an option that when you make a mask, it automatically assigns a different color? Actually, there is one. So let's erase all of them and go to Edit, uh, Preferences, and um, Appearances. So in here, there's a checkbox you need to select. It's basically Cycle Mask Colors. And once it's selected, next time you create a mask, it will automatically assign a different color to it. All right, let's move uh, on to number eight. And it's called math. Basically what it is, um, let's say um, I have this logo and I want to move it exactly for some reason, uh, I don't know, like 133 pixels uh, to, the, to the right. So I would say, you know, normally you would do the math or whatever, but you can just say plus 133 and it'll move that for you. So basically what I'm trying to say is you can do math within this uh, stuff. And also you can do the same thing if you go to a composition settings you can do you know math in here as well like divided by two if you want the half of that or whoops let's say times three uh, or you know you can just basically what I'm trying to say you can do math and it's awesome it saves you lots of time all right move on number nine it is gradient overlay now this one uh, I find uh, to be very useful if you're one of those people that use um, ramp a lot um, or now it's gradient ramp all right so Let's say you have this and you only have option of using two colors and sometimes uh, that's not a good thing. So 
there's another one that you can do just right click here and uh, go to uh, layer styles and inside here you'll find gradient overlay and this one is the exact same thing as uh, ramp but you have more and more options way more options really so you can go into uh, colors in here and edit colors and um, you know you can set this one to red or whatever the color is and then you know so on you can basically add as many colors as, as you'd like and you'll see it over here and also um, in styles you have more options um, you know angle and and so on but anyway so yeah gradient overlay and also aligned uh, with layer this is really cool because if you have text and you want it to be exactly aligned to the text you can just turn that on and it will automatically find the uh, the bottom and the top all right number 10 reverse keyframes now I find using this one quite often really uh, let's say I have a uh, animation like a position uh, animation and I just move my stuff all over the place um, just you know the usual and let's say once I've made my little animation here um, my boss comes up to me and says I like how you're doing it but can you reverse it uh, and you know I hope you're not dragging your keyframes and stuff the easiest way to do it is just selecting your keyframes and do uh, right click and keyframe assistance and just say time reverse keyframes and there you have it and it'll give you the the opposite of what you made all right let's move on to number 11 uh, expressions to keyframes this one can be also very useful uh, let's say you have a an expression whether it be uh, inertia bounds or or, or, or or you know whatever other you have uh, what if you I'll make just a simple one a wiggle expression let's do like I don't know five four hundred okay and let's say it's just basic movement let's say I want to uh, the 3d term for that would be like bake that make, make it a um, uh, make it into keyframe so you just keep make one keyframe and then right click on it and say keyframe assistance and just say convert expressions or expression to keyframes uh, and it'll give you keyframes so now you can uh, erase this wiggle expression and you can you know control the keyframes and clean stuff up if you need to so anyway yeah uh, Pretty useful I don't use it that often but you might not know about this one all right number 12 uh, splitting layers now this one uh, probably is uh, s like very common and a lot of people probably know about it but if you don't uh, it's very cool like let's say you want to split this uh, layer uh, you know often you you find yourself doing some editing in After Effects uh, more often than you think anyway and let's say you want to split it so in the past you probably would duplicate it and try to cut it and stuff like that but um, the quick the quickest way is control shift D and it will split that for you so yeah control shift D very easy all right control shift D splitting layers it is awesome number 13 is guide layers now I feel like this feature is often overlooked mainly because uh, it's, it's you know if you right click it uh, on any layer or something like that it's uh, it's like way over here and a lot of people just don't pay attention to it they just get to wherever you need to get to and and forget about the guide layer so and what what is gu guide layer basically if you have any kind of shapes uh, in your composition or text like notes like change um, the background to white or something and let's say you have all this stuff in your composition but you don't want to be seen in the final render it's just something some notes for uh, the next guy to see or whoever you know something random uh, but how do you make it not seen in the final render in, in case they accidentally hit render? So one way to do is uh, select your your layers and just right click and go to guide layers. And basically it will give you this little window here uh, with the guide layers in them. And when you hit render, you will not see them. So yeah, basically it hides it. It hides whatever you want to hide in the final render. Number 14, moving masks. And this one... Um, is pretty cool I think let's say you want to um, I don't know make a mask of this uh, you know still you'll say you want to mask this thing out let's say that's what I want to do and I'm clicking and dragging it and while I'm in edit mode or live you know how do I move it to the right or to the left uh, because it's kind of just locked in on the center when I'm holding shift you know or if I'm not holding shift I'm just in general it's just locked in how do you move it while you're in edit mode or this mode so uh, one way to do it is just uh, holding or hitting and holding down space on, on your keyboard and and while you're holding it you, you can move it anywhere and place it and then once you release you're back to being locked in 
Uh, so it's also useful in, in like if you're doing a lot of rotor work or something like that. And um, let's say you go around here, you know, do your stuff. Um, and let's say you clicked on here, you're like, ah, oh, man, I want to move closer to the object. So while you're, you know, holding this down, just hold space and you can move that. So and release it and it's locked. Number 15 is creating a motion path from a mask. So here I am in this composition. I have a solid, just a plain white solid. What if, let's say, I brought some kind of shape uh, into my composite, uh, into my solid. Let's say I'll just do a mask, like a polygon shape. Um, and let's say, what if I want my object um, in the back uh, to animate along this path? Uh, so how do I create that motion path? Um, you know, one way you can do it is selecting your logo and manually animating. But it's not going to be precise and it's going to take you for way too long to do. But one way to do it is just selecting the motion path and just hitting M on your keyboard and just this mask uh, path, select that, and then Control C to copy it. And then go into your logo and hit P. And I'm going to hide this, by the way. P, and then because we're going to be animating the position of it. And while position is selected, I'm going to hit Control V on my keyboard and I'll paste the path and as you can see it'll animate along that path and obviously you can always reverse that with the uh, with the key, key free, uh, keyframe assistance and keyframe reverse if you want to go the other way around so yeah creating a motion path from a mask number 16 is scaling multiple frames and actually we can stay in this um, composition for that so what if let's say this animation is a little too slow how do I uh, slow or make it faster well what you know obviously I need to bring these keyframes together but I hope you're not doing this I hope you're not dragging it like that because uh, that can take forever especially if you have lots of keyframes the quickest way to do it is just holding down alt on your keyboard and right click on your uh, keyframe here and just and drag left and right and that will scale it down um, and up number 17 it is copying paths from illustrator so let's go into illustrator real quick so let's say I have a um, uh, I don't know some kind of a I don't know, shape, let's say a star or something like that. What if, let's say, I want this shape in After Effects and just something quick, let's say, I, you know, I have some logos and I like some elements. So basically, if I, if I just Control C, make like a copy of this thing and go back into After Effects, um, I can select the, the uh, you know, image or uh, solid and just Control V to paste it and I'll have that star in my composition. It'll be right there in the center. Number 18 is maximizing frame with the shortcut. And all it is is basically um, if you use a squiggly key on your keyboard, it's right next to your escape button, um, upper left corner of your keyboard. Uh, if you hover over a window and hit that key, uh, you will go into full screen mode for any of the windows, really. And this is kind of cool because sometimes you have too many keyframes and you just want to focus, you know, to see all of the layers and stuff like that. Or if you want to go full screen on this for preview purposes or uh, to do some tight rotor work. So, yeah, it's a quick shortcut, but it can save you time and uh, be very helpful. So, number 19 is uh, rendering uh, comps out of media encoder. And th this is something that a lot of people don't know about. You can render any comps um, in your project in media encoder. So, all you have to do is just bring your media encoder right next to you or whatever and then select and click and drag any of the comps uh, you have in your project and you will, you will have them highlight or you know in this window and then you can apply any other presets from media encoder or any codecs and stuff like that uh, you know you also remove stuff um, and so yeah very useful you can almost select uh, create like a batch of uh, things to render and hit render and keep working so it's kind of like a background render. All right, so the last one is close panel and frame with the shortcut. And all it is is basically all these panels you accumulate over like a long period of time on working on the project. And sometimes you want to close these uh, panels quickly. So what's the shortcut for that? Control W will close one at a time. So if you do Control W, you can just close one at a time. Or if you want to clear out the whole frame, basically all of them, it, it the shortcut for that is Control uh alt w and you'll clear the whole thing out so this is the end of my 20 useful tricks in after effects that you may not know about i hope you found it useful be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel 
uh, add me on your uh, on Facebook, Twitter, share this video, comments. I would love to hear from you. Uh, also, be sure to visit the website, ukramedia.com. Until next time, my name is Sergei Proknevsky, and I am with ukramedia.com.